Well, good morning. Good Thursday morning. Great to join uh, with you this morning as we start in God's Word. Look in the Gospel lesson from this next weekend. The call of Matthew as Jesus goes by and calls him from a tax collector. It's a wonderful thing, and of course my name being Matthew helps a little bit as well. But what I want to look at today is how Jesus does it and what that means for us. It's a thing about mercy. Mercy is a gift. It's a character Istic of God, one who shows mercy, one who bestows mercy. Now, I want you to think about this from Matthew 9, verses 9 to 13. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting in a tax booth, and he said to him, follow me. And he rose and followed him. And as Jesus reclined at the table in his house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard it, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. Now, I think really one of the problems that we have in evangelism today is that we're afraid to get dirty. I mean, really, get dirty. We want our Christian friends to, and our family members to come to faith in Jesus in a very clean and very simple way. We want it on our terms. We want them to ask, can I visit your church sometime? Can I come with you on Sunday mornings and wake up early and maybe have some donuts afterwards? Can I come and visit and hear what you're doing there? And we say, sure. And they show up in their good clothes and then they tell us how impressed they are about this sermon. Then a few weeks later, they get baptized and it's all so clean and comfortable. They become members and everything's all good and hunky-dory. But that's not what happens when Jesus calls Matthew to follow him. I'm mean, going to start... Matthew is getting, sitting in his tax collector's booth in exactly the place where he does his dirty work all the time. Now, what do I mean by dirty work? Well, tax collectors, they cheated people. And they were also collaborators with the Roman government. Okay, fine. Well, I mean, at least Matthew is going to leave that yucky stuff behind, right? Uh, no. The first thing he does is to invite Jesus to his home for a party. And who else is at the party? Exactly who to expect notorious sinners, like other tax collectors, prostitutes, and shady businessmen, crooked cops, and maybe even Gentile or two. And the good people of Jesus' day, they are shocked. But Jesus has a perfectly logical response. He says, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. Now, if you want to bring sinners to faith, you have to go where sinners are. For Matthew, that was a tax collector's booth. I mean, you need to go and be with them. You need to go and love them, just like Jesus did. And if that means staying close to them while they deal with uncomfortable situations like addiction or divorce, job losses or sickness and death, well, then you have to be there with them and love them through it all the way. Because that's the way that Jesus loved us and still loves us. Every day of our lives, he came into our broken world as a tiny baby, he slept in an animal's feeding box. He grew up to care for broken people, the sick and the hurting, the outcasts and the unwanted. He died for them and for us on the cross outside the city. He died for everyone. Out where rejects go is where he went. And then he rose from the dead to give us new life forever. You see, now we're no longer rejected, unwanted people, but now we are God's beloved children baptized, forgiven, made righteous. And now we are welcomed by him forever. See, the story of Matthew reminds us that as we go through our lives, as we meet people, that we are called to follow Jesus' example, loving them and being with them where they're at, helping them to see Jesus and his mercy and his love throughout everything. And if it means getting dirty, getting messy, if it means uh, you know, kind of getting down in the struggles they're facing and walking with them through it, that's exactly what we are to do. To put our arm around someone, to hold someone else's hand, to comfort them as they grieve, to help them through the struggles, the hardships, the heartaches of life, to help them confront sin for what it is, and then to see the divine healer, the physician, if you would, Jesus to give them the balm that only he can give, to bring peace to their lives.
You see, that's what we're called to do. That's what we see in this story with, with Matthew. It's this thing about mercy, God's mercy. A mercy that forgives, a mercy that restores, a mercy that builds up, a mercy that makes whole. A mercy that is a gift, not one that we deserve, but one that's simply given to us because that's who God is. That's his character. That's a characteristic of him. One who shows mercy, steadfast love. And so that needs to be a, a hallmark, uh, a mark of our lives as followers of Jesus. So as you go through this next week, as you go through this weekend, as you uh, head out into the next month, as you see others, think, how can I go get messy so they might know the love and mercy of our God? So you might really consider how God's mercy can bring life, life into their lives. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord, live in me and welcome people through me, especially the ones that I would rather reject. You never rejected me. And so help me to embrace and to forgive, to speak your word and to point them to the wholeness that only you can offer. We ask this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. See, I love these Lutheran Hour devotions. Uh, that was an excerpt of one of them. That's our mission month for this month of June. So if you see the envelopes in the back of the sanctuary at the Welcome Center, realize that for the month of June, we're supporting Lutheran Hour Ministries. And one quick little recap of that. The way I learned about Lutheran Hour Ministries was not through the Lutheran Hour, which is broadcast on weekends, and you can hear about it on our e email blast on different radio stations or even an online podcast. But rather, we used to go decorate the rose parade floats down in Pasadena on New Year's Eve and then stay and watch them. And so I always knew Lutheran Hour as the ones who uh, would hire us to go decorate all this paper mache with flowers and seeds and the like. And then we'd go sleep on the parade route on Colorado Boulevard and then watch them as they came by the next day saying, hey, that's what I did, whether there were flowers falling out of it because I didn't bloom well enough or other things. Uh, good memories, but a great, a great organization, Lutheran Hour Ministries. Well, consider how to pray for them. Pray for others. Get me messy by sharing God's mercy. Have a wonderful day. Know that I love you and aloha.